Today, I'm sharing how we implemented IKEA's Boaxel system in our home office. This is the third Boaxel system that I have installed. If you missed them, the videos for the other two will be linked in the description box below, along with all products mentioned in this video. Thus far, we have done a master bedroom closet, which turned out amazing, as well as a small closet that stores luggage, running gear, linens, and seasonal clothing items. This office space has a beautiful blank wall that sits behind the dog's chairs which made for the perfect canvas. You will notice a paint color differential on this wall. I went to patch a few spots and surprise, unfortunately it didn't match perfectly. Not sure what happened there, however it is going to need to be completely repainted and yes I wish I would have done that before hanging the system. To begin, the furniture was moved out and the floors were swept. The first project we did when this house was purchased was refinish the floors. They were completely sanded down, stained and sealed, except for a few spots under the baseboard heaters that were challenging to get. We have since gone back and fixed those spots with the exception of the two in this room and this now serves as a reminder for us to do that. The first step for installing this system is to hang the horizontal suspension rails. I will warn you, these were placed too high the first time around and I went back and lowered them approximately 6 inches. Once the rail is leveled, drill pilot holes and then plug those with quarter inch anchors and use screws to secure the horizontal rails in place. Before installing the rest of the horizontal rails, ensure that it is a good height by temporarily installing two of the vertical rails along with the shelves to see if the layout works. And in this case, it did not, it was slightly too high. Back to the drawing board, that first horizontal rail was removed and shifted down six or so inches. The most annoying part of this is that there are now three anchors in the wall that need to be pried out, patched, and painted. We'll save that for a different day. They will be covered by baskets anyways. Once the new height looked good, the other two horizontal rails were installed next to one another. The vertical rails were then placed in their respective spots. You'll notice that these ones are about two thirds the length of the other bow axle projects that I've shared. Ikea does sell these in two different sizes, 39 inches and 79 inches. The dog's chairs are going to be kept under here, therefore only half the wall is going to be used for shelving. Next up is setting the shelves on the top and bottom rows. A rubber mallet is the ideal tool to use when securing these brackets in place. The first few shelves can be a little tricky to snap in, however eventually they will click. They're only being installed on the top and bottom because we need to determine the appropriate distance between the vertical rails before securing those rails in place. Double check to make sure the vertical rails are level and then mark them with a pencil. The shelves will need to be removed now and the vertical rails can just be swung to the side to drill the pilot hole. Once you have that, plug it with an anchor and then screw the vertical rail in place. For this project, two screws per vertical rail were used, one towards the top and another towards the bottom. Now that the rails are all secured in place, all of the shelves can be installed. As for storage, I was inspired by Judy the organizer. She has a very similar setup in her office using the Algot system, which I believe has now been discontinued. I'll link her channel below. The top shelf has four Besta boxes or baskets from Ikea. They have some structure, however, they aren't the sturdiest containment. In true Ikea fashion, they do arrive all folded up. When assembled, they fit perfectly lined up across the top and are a decent size. The middle two shelves are home to 12 catch-all containers that will likely evolve to store a plethora of items. I started with these basket weave containers from Target which worked well, however, I wasn't in love with the look. I temporarily added some labels using the Brother P-Touch labeler, which is by far one of the best labelers, I'll link it below. However, I ultimately ended up returning them and swapping them out with these white Kugis spins from Ikea. I can never pronounce anything correctly from Ikea. They're beautiful and slick and hide everything that will be stored in them, which is wonderful. They do come with lids that rest on top, however, lids can sometimes be a deterrent, so those have been left off for now. Ikea's Variera bins are used for our inboxes, which there are two of, one for myself and one for my husband. These are very useful. It's a great place to put mail, receipts, notes, and other random paperwork that we haven't had a chance to address yet. When we get the chance, we go through them and clean them up. They make for a great throw all. If there is any paperwork around the house that is something my husband is working on, I just put it here. It's not going to get lost or thrown out. 
The final organizing tool that I used is this pan organizer. I talked about this wire pan holder in my five more great organizing products from Target video, which I will link in the description box below. This is my new favorite office storage tool. It's extremely sturdy, aesthetically pleasing, and of course, functional. Moving on to the labels, I started with the labels for the 12 boxes for the center two shelves. Adhesive label holders from Bigsbo, which come in packs of four, were used. I went back and forth as to whether or not the label should be on the side with the hole or not and ultimately decided to put them on the clean side. Decisions, decisions. I'm extremely anal when it comes to labels being applied centered and leveled. Painter's tape serves as a great tool to ensure accuracy. For these bins, a piece of tape was placed at the top and at the bottom and then I eyeballed the center from here which is a little riskier than I usually am when applying labels. The labels were printed using Word and then cut down to size. I did leave the cardboard label that came with it in the back of the label plate. It helped prevent the new label from falling out. I am very pleased with how these ended up. Filling the containers was equally as much fun. The likelihood that the purpose of each of these bins will change in the future is high. Moving on to the labels for the gray baskets at the top, which are vinyl labels on a clear bin clip. I broke out my trusty silhouette to cut these ones once the machine cuts the label, transfer paper is placed on top. Contact paper works just as well if you don't have any transfer paper on hand. I use something to press the contact paper on where the labels are, which today was the back of the tweezers. I had some leftover acrylic bin clips from the Master Closet organization project, which I was going to return. A majority of them arrived all scratched up and I didn't want to use them. However, I figured these would be high enough up that you wouldn't see all of the scratches. The back of the label is peeled off along with the outside of the label, and then the inside sections are weeded with tweezers. After that, the label is pressed onto the bin clip and the transfer paper is removed. These labels are little labors of love, but are worth it. They clip right on top of the bin. The white font looks very nice against the gray bin. The two inboxes received inbox labels and they were placed on the bottom shelf, making them easy to access. A few pretty books were added to this shelf as well. This first coffee table book has absolutely beautiful interior decor photos and inspiration to look through. And the second book is by one of my favorite organizers, Nikki Boyd of At Home with Nikki. I'll link her channel below. It is filled with equally beautiful photos and great content. I love the overall look of the book's cover. It has a very sophisticated and clean look and serves as another great coffee table book. This faux plant, which has been around for a few moves, was also added on top of the books for that little extra effect. Next to the books is the pan organizer, which is going to hold a couple different items. The first of which are some poly envelopes. As you can see, they are nested inside one another to save space. Next to those are more poly envelopes, which function to store receipts. These receipts all need to be scanned and uploaded to the cloud so that the hard copies can be destroyed. We have a few extra laptops floating around the place that needed a place to live, one of which is an old MacBook which is used strictly for designing and printing vinyl labels now. I just can't let it go. And the last section of this pan organizer has a notepad. I found this beautiful frame at TJ Maxx which will eventually hold a beautiful picture of the dogs. These gray file folders also surfaced which were added to the pan organizer. The very far corner is going to have the old trusty printer. This is another antique that has served us well and it has been through a couple moves as well. You'll notice that its cord is half the length that it should be. That is what happens when you accidentally shut the cord in the car door, take off and wrap it around a tire a couple times. Regardless, we added a new plug and it's good as new. I've raved about these magnetic cable ties before in my Amazon finds video, which is also linked below. You can only imagine my excitement when this perfectly wrapped cord attached seamlessly to the metal frame of the shelving unit. The cord is hidden out of sight and out of the way. I also forgot to add my writing utensil trays back to the bottom shelf. These were, surprise surprise, IKEA finds as well from a couple years ago. I also ended up swapping the printer with the pan organizer. I feel like with the height difference, it looked better this way. There you have it, another Ikea Boaxel install and a little office supplies organization.